Darkness characterized the being to which the fossil belonged, and the thoughts and desires that once dwelt within it never soared beyond those of the brute, one early anthropologist observed of ancient man. Indeed, the history of one human species is pure nightmare fuel, a true hell on earth that reads like a storyline from The Planet of the Apes. Around 800,000 years ago, in what is now Spain, our ancient human cousin hunted and ate others of their kind, leaving the most compelling evidence of cannibalism in human history. This species, known as Homo antecessor, is thought to be a dead European offshoot of Homo erectus, which split from the Denisovan Neanderthal sapiens lineage approximately 850,000 years ago. The world of anthropology regards the birth of the modern human as an excellent evolutionary leap. But this is not the case for Homo antecessor. In fact, most anthropologists believe that this species is an evolutionary disaster. In our own lineage, it was as if a sudden spark ignited the human brain, but evidence suggests that this spark did not occur in the ancient human known as Homo antecessor. This flawed evolution may have contributed to their extinction. This is fascinating because of the mysteries and unanswered questions surrounding our ancient human history. For example, their legs and knees were too thin, and their feet were not designed for fast running, a trait that should have evolved naturally as it did in the modern human lineage. These characteristics are considered evolutionary flaws in comparison to the modern human lineage. The shoulder blade is similar to all hominids with a typical human body plan, indicating that this species was not as skilled a climber as non-human apes or pre-erectus species, but could effectively launch projectiles such as stones or spears. They may have been broad-chested and heavy like Neanderthals, but their limbs were proportionally long, a trait more common in tropical populations. The kneecaps are thin and have underdeveloped tendon attachments, and their feet indicate that the species walked differently than modern humans. Nonetheless, despite its ancient age, the antecessor face is strikingly similar to that of modern humans rather than other archaic humans, particularly in its overall flatness and the curving of the cheekbone as it merges into the upper jaw. Though these features are only known from a juvenile specimen, the brain volume could have been 1,000 cubic centimetres or larger, but no intact brain case has been discovered. Despite having a larger brain than their predecessors, Homo antecessor teaches us that size does not always matter. Their thinking ability, at least in terms of tool-making and culture, was not promising. In other words, their evolutionary leap from the last common ancestor was incompatible with effective evolution. Yet, the answers to the mysteries surrounding this failed human species are clear. A quantum leap in human cognition and technology occurred around 800,000 years ago. Most importantly, mankind learned how to use fire, which anthropology considers to be the greatest single step forward in human history. However, there is no evidence that this species could use fire to cook, and the wear on the molars suggests that they consumed grittier and more mechanically challenging foods than later European species, such as raw meat and plant roots. Instead of using fire, these early Europeans most likely adapted to the cold through physiological means, such as eating a high-protein diet to support a heightened metabolism. Homo antecessor most likely migrated from the Mediterranean shore to inland Iberia, when colder glacial periods transitioned to warmer interglacials. They may have migrated along water bodies, most likely the Ebro River in the Sierra de Atapuerca region. A new research into these ancient humans remains suggests that these hominins were cannibals because human flesh was nutritious, and humans were easier targets than other types of large prey. Many bones at the Spanish archaeological site showed clear signs of cannibalization, including human tooth marks, cut marks, and fractures to expose the marrow, according to a study. Those bones were mixed with those of nine other mammal species, all of which had been butchered and eaten. Hunting parties may have been dispatched, primarily targeting deer in their savannah and mixed woodland habitats. But many specimens were cannibalized, possibly as a cultural practice. Researchers writing in the Journal of Human Evolution hypothesized that other humans were easier to catch and more nutritious than other animals, 
which could explain the cannibalism. In comparison to other types of prey, a lot of food could be obtained from humans at a low cost. These cannibals ate an early human child around 800,000 years ago. According to the study, the girl was probably between the ages of 9 and 11 when she was killed and eaten. And she wasn't the only victim. The remains of scores of people in Grandolina showed signs of cannibalization, including cuts, fractures where bones had been cracked open to expose the marrow, and even human tooth marks. In fact, 80 young adult and child specimens from the cave show cut marks and fracturing, indicating cannibalism. Human bodies were efficiently used, which may explain why the majority of bones are smashed or otherwise severely damaged. Tellingly, there are no complete skulls. Elements from the face and back of the skull are typically percussed, and muscle attachments to the face and base of the skull are severed. Furthermore, the intense modification of the face was most likely intended to gain access to the brain. The crown of the head was most likely struck, leaving impact scars on the teeth near the gum line. Several skull fragments even show the flesh was peeled from the bone. The ribs also have cut marks along the muscle attachments, indicating defleshing, and one individual has cuts down the length of the rib, possibly due to disembowelment. The nape muscles were severed, and the head and neck were separated from the body. The vertebrae were frequently cut, peeled and percussed. To disconnect the shoulder, the muscles on each clavicle were sawed off. One was chopped up and peeled. The femur was shattered, most likely to extract bone marrow. The hands and feet also show signs of percussion, cutting or peeling, most likely the result of dismemberment. Therefore only the meatier areas were prepared, with the rest discarded. This implies that they were butchering humans for food, but the face has significantly more cut marks than animal skulls. When this is observed in prehistoric modern human specimens, it is commonly interpreted as evidence of exocannibalism, a type of ritual cannibalism in which a person eats someone from outside their social group, such as an enemy from a neighboring tribe. Furthermore, when reviewing the evidence for cannibalism, Spanish paleontologists attributed the relative abundance of facial cut marks in the sample to the significantly different structure of muscle attachments between humans and typical animal prey species. Skull hunting and cannibalism, with their magical implications, date back over a million years. Nonetheless, the cannibalized group was entirely made up of young adults and children with no older members. They were most likely practicing exo-cannibalism and hunting down neighboring tribesmen. Given the high youth mortality rates in modern hunter-gatherer groups, the demographic is better explained as consuming fellow tribesmen who have already died from natural causes, war or an accident, possibly to avoid wasting food, according to one theory. The site contains fallow deer, bush-antlered deer, rhinos, the extinct European panther, lynx, fox, shrews and rabbits, as well as unidentified species of macaques, boar, bison and beaver. Large mammals are characterized by long bones, some of which are cracked open, presumably to access bone marrow. Others show evidence of percussion and defleshing. They were also butchering Hermann's tortoise, which is a readily available source of meat, given how slowly tortoises move. The cool and humid montane environment favoured the growth of olive, mastic, beech, hazelnut and chestnut trees, which may have served as food sources, though they become more common as the interglacial period progresses and the environment becomes wetter. The people also appear to have been eating hackberries, which have historically been used for medicinal purposes rather than to satisfy hunger because they contain very little calories. Homo antecessor appeared to have plenty of prey to choose from, so why were humans on the menu? To find out, the researchers used computer models to determine how many calories they would need each day. Then they calculated the caloric payoffs of various animals, including humans, and the energy required to catch them. They hypothesized that hunters would select prey based on a balance, the most calories for the least effort. Previous research revealed that while humans provided a moderately nutritious meal, other animals had far more calories per bite, according to the scientists. But if hunters had to expend less energy to catch human prey, they would benefit even if the caloric value of human flesh was lower, according to the study. 
The researchers discovered that, while human bones were the most common, they accounted for less than 13% of the hunter's caloric requirements, with the majority coming from rhinos, deer and horses. Nonetheless, unlike humans, these animals have a high energy cost. The analyses show that, like any predator, this human chose its prey based on the principle of cost-benefit balance. Considering only this balance, humans were a high-ranked prey type. This means that humans can provide a lot of food at a lower cost than other prey. No one knows for certain why Homo antecessors' intelligence and culture did not develop similarly to those of their cousins, but the anthropology community has proposed several theories. Homo antecessor, the last common ancestor, produced a race of humans capable of animalistic savagery and little else. In the end, cannibalism is not an effective evolutionary strategy. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.